local, live, late breaking. West 2 News starts now. They said he was throwing gas bombs over the fence, lighting up his own car. Tonight, an impound lot owner in disbelief after a man pays for his car, then sets it on fire. That man is now in jail. We're going to hear from the owner of the lot where it all happened. Plus, a substitute teacher in Osceola County accused of inappropriately touching two students now out on bond. The latest in the case and what people who live in his neighborhood are saying tonight. And a line of tornadoes ripped through Alabama, killing at least 22 people. We have a look at the damage there and in other areas across the country. We begin with the very latest on that severe weather. Good evening and thanks for joining us here on West 2 News. I'm Kelly Rippin. So a major system brought snow, flooding, even deadly tornadoes to some areas. So this is video coming in from Alabama where we've learned that at least 22 people have died after a strong storm came through. NBC's Dan Sheneman has more. Dan Sheneman, NBC News. Tonight, a man is in jail after deputies say he set his own car on fire as it sat in an impound lot. So this is video of some of the damage to his car that you can see. Investigators arrested Ayub Abdurrahman shortly after the incident. West Shoes Kelsey Thorard spoke with the impound lot's owner about what all happened. For now in Orange County, Kelsey Thorard, West 2 News. Tonight, a substitute teacher police say admitted to inappropriately touching two students is out of jail on bond. FNU Syed Asin Asher faced a judge yesterday and West 2's Amanda Ober spoke with some of his neighbors about the man who lives next door. Amanda Ober reporting West 2 News. We have to talk about some severe weather that's made its way across the country yeah. tonight, learning just in the last half hour that 22 people have now been confirmed right. killed in these tornadoes in the Alabama area. But this has impacted a lot of folks nearby. It, it has. This is a line of storms trying to work towards central Florida. And just for some perspective, we only had 10 tornado deaths in the entire country in 2018. Taking a look at Futurecast here coming up in just a bit. Kelly. Thanks, Kyle. President Donald Trump has a tough week ahead in Washington. Tomorrow, the House Judiciary Committee will request documents from more than 60 people within the president's administration as they begin an investigation on obstruction of justice and abuse of power. The House Oversight Committee is also demanding the White House turnover documents by tomorrow as it investigates whether the president advocated to get his son-in-law, Jared Kushner, top security clearance over objections from the intelligence and top White House officials. The president's former attorney, Michael Cohen, will also be back on Capitol Hill on Wednesday for another closed door hearing. We are certainly looking deep into the set of issues around Moscow Trump Tower. We're also looking at persistent allegations that the Russians have been laundering money through the Trump organization. I don't know that that's true. The president took to Twitter, calling himself an innocent man. New tonight, police in New Orleans say the son of one of their officers is the person accused of driving into a group of people last night, killing two and injuring seven others. Tashanti Tony is facing numerous charges for the crash that spanned three blocks. Now, investigators believe he was impaired at the time, but they're waiting for the results of a blood alcohol test. Of course, thousands of tourists flood New Orleans this time of the year ahead of Mardi Gras, and the accident happened close to one of the city's biggest parades. Police say even though Tony is an NOPD officer's son, it will neither change nor impact the department's investigation. Tonight, a family in Delray Beach is grieving after a woman was killed after being run over with a van. Police say Elson Silenciu was fighting with Marie Ambois yesterday over money after he had been doing work on her home. Now, that's when officials say he got into his van and ran her over. Ambois' daughter was also hit but did not die. The family says it's not clear what led to the tension regarding that money. Her only sister is now heartbroken that she is no longer here. I don't have no sister. I don't have no sister. She don't know nothing. Police found Silencio's car parked in Boynton Beach and eventually detained him nearby. He is now facing charges of aggravated battery, homicide, and a hit and run. Troopers in Bradenton have made an arrest in connection with last week's hit-and-run crash that left a teenager in critical condition. Zachary Brock was arrested on Saturday on the charges of leaving the scene of a crash involving serious injury and driving with no valid license. 
Surveillance video shows a van try to turn into a gas station and clip the black back of a black Audi driven by 19 year old Jackson Kelly. Now Kelly's car went airborne and flipped through the parking lot of a nearby hotel. Now troopers said Kelly was ejected from the car. His father says right now his only focus is on his son. It's not about that accident. It's not about arresting that guy. It's about a child's life that has been changed forever. A GoFundMe campaign has been set up to raise money for Kelly's medical expenses. More than 24 hours after lifting off from Cape Canaveral, the SpaceX Crew Dragon docked with the International Space Station. The redesigned capsule is the first U.S.-made crew capsule to pull up to the station in eight years. It successfully linked up on its own without the help of a robotic arm normally used to guide the spacecraft into position. Today we welcome a the brand new spacecraft to space station, a great new uh, uh, addition to the quiver of tools we have, humans, to further space exploration. This is a, a good day, first day of a, a new era uh, for the next generation of space explorers. Now, if the six-day test flight goes well, a capsule could take two NASA astronauts to the orbiting outpost this summer. A national program with a strong focus on teen safety came to Orlando this weekend. So still ahead, we're gonna introduce you to the Breaks program and hear from some of the teams who went through it. And 52 teams and 1,000 miles, the Iditarod sled dog race is now underway in Alaska. We'll have a look at the exciting start. Some local teenagers are now a little bit safer behind the wheel thanks to a national program that made its way to Orlando today. So the program is appropriately nicknamed Breaks, and West Shoes Amanda Ober has a look at some of the important lessons learned there. Amanda Ober reporting West 2 News. The long-awaited start of the 47th Iditarod Trail sled dog race kicked off in Anchorage, Alaska this weekend, and cheering crowds were there to send everyone off. Hundreds of dogs and their humans completed a ceremonial sprint through town. Now, there are 52 mushers and their dog teams competing for this year. All teams will be making their way through about 1,000 miles of remote countryside to the finish line in Nome. Now, we've had a very quiet day here locally in yeah. the Orlando area, but we right. have to talk about some of the severe weather that's happened across the country because yeah. it's impacting a lot of our neighbors. It, it was a beautiful end to the weekend yeah, it was around gorgeous here. It here. was warm, but it was not humid unless you were out by, say, the Space Coast. Right. That's where the humidity was kind of lingering this evening. It's still very nice out. We're starting to see some clouds now into Marion County, close to Flagler County. Kelly? The Arnold Palmer Invitational is ready to welcome some of golf's greatest to Bay Hill this week. And next in sports, Pat previews the new exhibit there that will honor the tournament's namesake. And Orlando looks to keep the magic flowing as it continues a three-game road trip in Cleveland. We're going to take you there for highlights when we come back. Local, live, late-breaking. West 2 News starts now. They serve more people food than every local restaurant combined. But just how safe is the food you're getting at big local stadiums and arenas. West Choose investigative reporter Greg Fox digs into the inspection records and comes up with surprising finds. In Orange County, Greg Fox, West Choose News. Now it should be noted that neither Spectra nor Levy would allow us to record a food safety inspection or record in the kitchens while food is being prepared. Major flooding has caused several road closures in Mississippi today. You can see from this drone footage in Yazoo County just how severe an entire road swallowed up by that water. Now the Yazoo River is backing up, causing the Sunflower River and Lake George to spill out of their banks. Right now there are no evacuation orders, but officials are monitoring the situation for what could come. And it's a much different story in the Midwest, where a major winter storm stopped over Missouri today, dumping several inches of snow. You can see the roads there looking pretty dangerous, and temperatures there are expected to plummet. Wind chills could drop to 10 below zero in St. Louis tomorrow, and potentially 20 below in Kansas City. And it's really a little wild to look around the country and see yeah. all of the severe weather happening right. when we are not seeing that here in the Orlando area. It was one of those things with the large scale pattern. We talk about the jet stream right. sometimes. Very active weather across most of the lower 48. We're on the other side of that where it's just been a huge area of high pressure. But now that's coming to an end. Kelly. 
Thanks, Kyle. It's something people have grown to expect when walking into a Walmart, a friendly face welcoming you to the store. But soon there will be a thing in the past. The company announced it's eliminating the greeter position by late April. Chris Guardaro spoke with a woman who is well known at a local Central Florida store about why she feels Walmart may be discriminating against certain people. In Orange County, Chris Guardaro, WESH 2 News. Now, Walmart initially gave greeters 60 days to move into other roles. They have since extended the deadline for greeters with disabilities, giving them more time to explore circumstances and possible accommodations. The search for a missing 11-year-old girl in Alabama has ended in tragedy. DeKalb County authorities said the body of Amberly Barnett was discovered yesterday morning after a 12-hour search that started on Friday night. Investigators are looking for the last person or people who saw her alive. She was staying with a relative when she disappeared, and neighbors there who live nearby are stunned. It was shocking. You just don't, you don't hear nothing about that around here. Maybe somebody drowning, but you don't hear a kidnapping out, not around this area. The sheriff has not publicly released details about where her body was found or the cause of her death because of the ongoing investigation. Police in Monterey County, California, went from searching for a missing man to investigating his possible staged disappearance in an effort to escape 24 rape charges. Kim Gordon is from Scotland, and he's wanted there for those charges. Now, on Monday, Gordon's son reported his father missing from Monastery Beach, saying his father went for a swim while he hiked. But investigators continued to search for clues, and the son's story began to fall apart. One story is, or one uh, rumor out there is that he hitchhiked, or they hitchhiked. Uh, we can't show how they got here, which is where, you know, the stories start, you know, facts don't start to match up, more questions start to get asked, and that's how this really started to fall apart for them. Now, Gordon's son has returned to Scotland, but he too could be facing charges for filing a false police report and aiding and abetting a fugitive. Meanwhile, U.S. federal agents are still searching for Gordon. A gas pipeline explosion rocked a community in northeastern Missouri. Here is video of that explosion. You can see the flames there shooting sky high when rescue crews arrived overnight. I've never heard something that loud before. It shook everything inside of me. I mean, it literally sat me back in my seat. Now the pipeline is about two hours west of St. Louis. It took about 40 minutes for the flames to die down once that supply was cut. No injuries have been reported. The 2019 Bridge Crossing Jubilee marking the anniversary of Bloody Sunday took place today in Selma, Alabama. Many national leaders were there, including Hillary Clinton, activist Jesse Jackson, and Senator Cory Booker. Now, this year marks the 54th anniversary of the demonstration, which was held on March 7, 1965, by civil rights activists. Alabama state troopers beat peaceful demonstrators as they tried to cross the bridge. The incident is credited with garnering support for the Voting Rights Act that passed later that year. Some states are tightening their vaccine exemption laws, hoping to encourage immunization throughout communities. This as measles cases have spiked, jumping 210 percent between 2017 and 2018. New on West 2, Matt Pritchard has more on what scientists are saying is the cause of this increase. In Washington, I'm Matt Pritchard reporting. Exciting news from a galaxy not so far away. We have a sneak peek at the new Star Wars attraction set to open at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Plus a big splash at SeaWorld, why the company is seeing an increase in attendance. Something a lot of people are excited about. West 2 News got a look at what's in the works at Star Wars Galaxy's Edge over at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Now, this is expected to open later this year, and West 2's Amanda Ober got a sneak peek of what the guests will soon experience. Amanda Ober, West 2 News. Now, a specific opening date for the new attraction has not been announced yet, but Disney says the galaxy will cover about 14 acres. And SeaWorld is celebrating a positive earnings report for fiscal year 2018. The park has been struggling in recent years to overcome the challenges still looming from the 2013 film Blackfish. But the latest report released shows an increase in both SeaWorld revenues and attendance in 2018. Theme park analysts attribute the strong performance to SeaWorld getting back to its roots. So last year or so, they've really decided that they're not so much going to try and compete with what they once were, 
or what uh, Disney and Universal are offering, but really trying to create value for people in the community and uh, core fans who have stuck by them and giving them more reasons to come back. Now, the latest figures show that in 2018, both SeaWorld attendance and revenue up 8.6 percent. SeaWorld plans to open several new additions this year, including a new Sesame Street attraction. Now, we've been following some severe weather across the United States through the night. Quiet right. here locally, though, but of course following what's been going on because it does impact us here. Yeah, absolutely, and it will impact some parts of the viewing okay. area. We're just starting to see a little bit of this rain working to far northwest Marion okay. County, but that's all it is at the moment is rain. Kelly? Thanks, Kyle. The NASCAR vehicles long gone from the Speedway, but racing returns to Daytona this weekend. Up next, he's a star in his own sport, and in advance of a big weekend, this we're going to tell you about the cool thing this young man has done with about 100 acres of fertile central Florida land. So we had 115 mile an hour wind. I think he summed it up right there. He's enjoyed quite a bit of yeah. success and he loves Daytona. You may have heard it in his voice there. So best of luck to Blake this week. He's a really good young man. Excellent. We'll be cheering him on. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we'll have good weather coming yeah. up this weekend. I know we're still a little further, further out. We are. Yeah, sure. That's day six and day seven of this forecast. But I think the weekend looks good. And really, the only concern would be right now through the next couple of hours as this line of rain and storms approaches. Pretty warm going forward. It's looking good for Supercross and for Bay Hill as we have a yes. lot of people coming into town yes. for that as well. And you can get your work week started bright and early with West 2 News Sunrise. We'll get you out the door with the biggest stories of the day and the weather and trap you need to start your day. Wake up with Wesh at 4.30. Have a good night.